welcome today to the sixth uh, blog that we've started at FPC Louisa. And uh, again, we welcome you to uh, this lesson today. And I hope that you find it encouraging and interesting and uh, that God uses it to, uh, to be an encouragement in your life today. And uh, as we get started, I uh, we're going to be talking about, uh, about prayer, and we're going to be talking about Christ praying for us specifically. And so with that, let's uh, open with a word of prayer and, and get the uh, lesson started. Father, we come before you and we're thankful for the opportunity to come uh, to you uh, through your Son, that he intercedes for us and works on our behalf on a constant basis, and we're thankful for that. We pray that today's lesson will be uplifting and encouraging, and that through it we will know you uh, just a little bit better. And we ask all these things in Christ's name. Amen. Well, one of the things that uh, this last year has probably uh, raised our level of awareness is prayer. Uh, with so many things that have gone on, not just the pandemic, but with the, the, the normal um, range of cancers, heart attacks, you name it. Uh, prayer has been intensified, and I think uh, through all of this, maybe that's one reason for all these things this year. I, I, I don't know, but God does, and he know, and I know that he wants us but to be prayerful about things and understand more and more about, about prayer. And so with that, we, we know that we, uh, many of us have been praying uh, more and more for people, uh, more and more for our churches, uh, for individuals, for pastors. Uh, most pastors have gone through a difficult year, to say the least. And this year has not started off a whole lot better. Uh, people are still dying. People are still going to hospitals. People are still struggling. And yet we see uh, God's blessings in the midst of this in a variety of forms. And one of those blessings is to know that, that Jesus uh, intercedes for us. And so I want to start off with today... Uh, a promise from God in Romans 8.32, and we've been still looking at uh, unshakable hope uh, from Max Lucado on the promises of God and how they bring us hope in difficult times like these. And so Paul says in Romans 8.32, who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. So Paul speaks a, a, a lot about uh, our sin nature, uh, our inability to overcome that on our own, and that Christ is the one that intercedes for us all the time. You know, it, it, that, that verse carries with it that someone is bringing specific requests before someone. Jesus is bringing specific requests on our behalf to the Father. Uh, in this case, uh, it's on our behalf that he's, he's talking to the Father with. It's, if Jesus had said, come to me and you will have a trouble-free life, then we wouldn't need any prayers. We wouldn't need any intercession. But he promised just the opposite. Jesus tells that it, we will face difficulty. But he is overcome. And because Jesus is overcome, when we have a, a personal relationship with him, we have also become overcomers. But he did promise to always be with us, no matter what the circumstance, no matter what the problem, and no matter what the difficulty. And he's not... He's not left us in 2020, and he's not trying to find us in 2021. He's still with us. 
So you have hope if you're getting ready to face a difficult circumstance, or maybe you're in the middle of a circumstance, or you're coming out of one. Know Jesus is praying for you and is with you in all things. The thing that, that disturbs us many times is we want what we want in our prayers, and we don't know many times how to pray or what's the best for us, but Jesus does. That's why it's so important to remember Hebrews 7.25. Therefore, he is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. Jesus is the one that said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. There's no way to get to the Father except through the Son. And Jesus said that, that he was the only way. He was the truth and the only way to get to the Father. We go through Jesus to get to the Father. And because of this, he can completely save us. He doesn't save us part way. And then we do good things, and he saves us the rest of the way. He saves us completely, right at that moment in time. We see him as the, as the promised one, as the Messiah, as the Savior of the world, as the one who came, who died, and rose again. We see him, when we see him in that light and ask his forgiveness of our sin, he does forgive. He completely forgives right then. Another scripture would help us know that Jesus prays for us is found in John 17, 20. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message. Jesus has just uh, prayed for his disciples that were among him at that very time. And then he moves from the ones who were there to the ones that will be there in the future. For the past 2,000 years, people have heard their message, they've heard Jesus' message, and through God's grace, they have come to follow him, to believe in him. And Jesus was praying for you and I even 2,000 years ago. Jesus has been praying for his disciples, and now he, he has moved on to, to the followers of the future. Jesus' desire is for all of us to be in unity, to love each other uh, at a time probably in, more than I've ever seen in my 71 years. We need a time when the church can reach out with the only real love that is in the world and touch people, and that is now. To, to love each other uh, is an impossible task without being in the presence and have God in your presence all the time. I think we had a, have a long way to go, but Jesus makes all things possible. It's difficult because of that nature that you and I all have, that sin nature, but Jesus can overcome that. There are no magical prayers. When we ask Jesus to become our Lord and Master, uh, we find that the scriptures tell us there is no longer any condemnation in that, uh, in, our, in, in who we are, it is, it, that sins are forgiven. Our sins are completely and forever forgiven. Listen to God's promise in Romans 8. 1. Therefore, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We struggle with that because we struggle with a free gift. And God has given us a free gift in his grace through faith that we're saved. It's not by what we do. And one of our biggest problems uh, in our Christian life is oftentimes when we come to know the Lord, we're going to try and work ourselves to death so that we can stay in a relationship. And nowhere in the scripture does it say that you have to, you, you, you have to work for your salvation, it says just the opposite. We have realized at that moment what a sinful mess we are. And we begin to try and 
work ourselves to keep the, the relationship going, and that's not, that's not the case. Out of this, we can fall into the trap, a big trap, and it's called legalism, where uh, we start to look at each other and compare. And did you wear the right thing? Did you dress the way you should have? Uh, did you say the right thing? Are you reading the right material? Uh, uh, we begin to, to categorize what uh, God really wants, and yet we end up putting him in a box. The problem ar arises, uh, how much is enough? Uh, how much can we do? How, how much can we do right? Uh, when we never could do much right to begin with, how much right can we do now? And when the end comes, was it enough? Did we do enough correct stuff uh, to, to save, save ourselves? And that goes contrary to what the scriptures have to say. The Apostle Paul really did answer the works question in Romans 8. Where there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. We truly have set, been set free in Jesus. There is work to do. God has a purpose for us. He has a plan. Uh, he's always had a plan for our lives, but we need him to complete that plan, to complete that purpose. He has a, a call that he wants to give, I believe, each and every one of us. Whatever that may be, doesn't mean that you're, you're going to leave your uh, family and friends and and go overseas doesn't mean that you have to leave your job. It does mean that where you're at, God wants to use you, and he will prepare you for that task that he has on hand. And so God did save us for a purpose, and that purpose is not to work to keep our salvation, but we work because of our salvation. And so Jesus becomes our, our new standard. He is the standard to follow. What we see in the world today is a people without standards. They just they pick and they choose, and they're frustrated. They don't have a, uh, it's hard to find encouragement in a world like we live in. Matter of fact, it's, it, it works just the opposite. If you don't have the Lord, interceding for you, if you don't know him in a personal way, the odds are uh, stacked way against you. You're not going to find the happiness that you're looking for. Jesus was sinless in every way. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day, Jesus never made, uh, the, he never, he faced many problems. But he never succumbed to the temptations around him. So Lakato says it this way. He was the image of God, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. That was the image. Jesus was not only just the image. Jesus was God in the flesh. He was Emmanuel, God with us. He came to show us the correct standard of life. Jesus accomplished what you and I could not accomplish. That's why there's no condemnation when we come to know Christ. That's why Jesus is constantly interceding for us. That's why he's at the right hand of the Father interceding uh, specifically for you and I. We don't, it's difficult to understand how, how can how can Jesus be interceding for uh, the billions of people that are on planet Earth? And in the meantime, uh, keep the whole universe going. But he's God, and he has the ability to do whatever uh, that it demands, whatever uh, the day, the years, the centuries demand. God has the capability of continuing that on and on. God's promise of salvation for Abraham didn't involve works. He didn't say, Abraham, you've got to have this many sheep or that many cattle 
or you've got to do this right, you've got to do that right, and if things work out, you're going to have salvation. No, he promised it by faith. And so God's promises, that promise to you and I is that our salvation comes the same way. It doesn't come by uh, us working ourselves to death in his kingdom. It comes by self, our salvation comes through faith in Christ. And uh, in, in Lakato's book, I wanted to read something that uh, he quotes from from Karl Barth. And there he says, On the one side, there is God in his glory as creator and Lord. And on the other side, there is man, not merely the creature, but the sinner, the one who exists in the flesh and who in the flesh is in opposition to God. It is not merely a frontier, but a yawning abyss. Yet, this abyss is crossed not by man, not by both God and man, but only by God. This man does not even know how it comes about or happens to him. And we find this so true when we look at, at understanding grace, uh, at understanding faith, we wonder, why is it that one year, which seemed to be totally opposed to God, and then in the next year, we seem to be a little more open to spiritual things. And then in another year, we seem to be accepting of the things that we would have never accepted. And I believe Part of that is God's, uh, Jesus' intercession for us with the Father. And whatever he, God does in the midst of our conversations, uh, our prayers, uh, the reading of his word, whatever all of that may be, God uses that to change a hard heart, to take a, a heart of stone and melt it down so it's now pliable, and that he can use it for his glory. And so uh, we find that uh, I want to finish this lesson by looking at another thing that Lakeda writes at the end of that chapter. And we find there, uh, the, the, listen to the meaning. Uh, no condemnation, not limited condemnation condemnation, appropriate condemnation, or calculated condemnation. That is what people give people. What does God give his children? No condemnation. Stand on this promise, or better said, take this promise to the clock, your personal debt clock. As you look up at the insurmountable debt you have, the debt you can never pay, let this promise be declared. There is now no condemnation for those who in Christ are in Christ Jesus. And so with that, we finish uh, the, the lesson today. And I don't know what you may get out of this, but I got out of this that, that God loved us so much that he sent his son to the world that those that believe on him may never perish. God doesn't want us to perish. He doesn't want to be us to be separated from him for all eternity. And so he's provided a way, not by something that you and I can do, but what he had to do. And that was to sacrifice himself in front of his creation and pay the, the debt that you and I owe. And because of that, we can come before him, and Jesus still can come before the Father, and we can be reconciled back to him so that, so that God can fulfill his intended purpose for our lives. We may think that whatever we work at is our intended purpose. It's a way to make a living for a family. It's a way to uh, do some things. 
it may be a way that God will use uh, for you to work uh, with him and he can work through you. But our intended purpose is to reach people, uh, to uh, look out into a, a large dying world and bring good news. And so that's what, that's what Jesus brings, good news. And so once we have the good news, we accept the good news and believe on him, there is no more condemnation for you and I. Does that mean we will never sin again? No. But we have forgiveness. The Bible is clear. If we do sin, we, we have an intercessor that can forgive that sin. We just have to ask. And it may seem strange to many people uh, that you can sin and uh, that you can never find forgiveness after that. And yet we see through the scripture that we can. And so I, I, I pray this, this day that uh, as you listen to this, as you read, as you uh, listen to the, to the words that come from the pulpit, or for the many ways that God uses to get his message to you, I pray that uh, you'll find encouragement in a world where there's very little encouragement today. And let's pray. Father, we finish this lesson being grateful that we can come before you. We're grateful for your word. We're grateful for the ability to relate to you because of your son. We're thankful that, that the Lord is praying for us right now, specifically for each and every one of us as we go through difficulties and turmoils and circumstances. Lord, we know that we have a, a partner, we have a Savior, we have someone who cares more than we can imagine. And so we're grateful for all of this. We're thankful that you're still in our midst and have promised never to leave us nor forsake us. We do pray for those that struggle so much today and their families, losses of life and jobs, the turmoil that we see in, in our country. And we, we lift our, our country up and we know that you have a plan some of that plan doesn't look very good to us. And yet we know that you will complete what you started out to do. And we know that you allow some things. Uh, and Lord, we know that you know what's best and you're in control. And we give uh, thanks again to you in all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Oh, and I, I, I'm sorry, I had it written and didn't, didn't, didn't notice it, but if there are any questions, whether it regards the Bible, salvation, I can tell you I don't know, I have all the answers, but I, but I know what salvation is about. It's about accepting God's free gift and allowing him to come into your heart and to be able to uh, have forgiveness where there is, you're no longer condemned about who you are because you become a new Christian, a new Christian, a new creature. And so if you do have any kinds of questions or pertaining to the material, uh, you can look on the bottom, I believe, on the blog and see uh, my email address. You can call the church at 638-4861. Uh, uh, there'll be someone uh, somewhere that will be able to get a hold of you and talk to you. Thank you very much.